And welcome to ESL TV for the Black Monster Cup Group C. We're underway with our second game of the night. It's going to be Virtus Pro up against M5. And let's go over the lineups for you guys at home who might not be too familiar with either of them. On the side of Virtus Pro, we have, again, bear with me here on some of these names Power, Default to Evil, Peter Porker, Neon, and Licrit. Licrit. That's, ooh, that one's tough. And anyway, over on the side for M5, we have, uh, we'll just say PvP, Sar, Flash in the Night, Day Ruin, and Archie. Actually, I believe I do uh, know Day Ruin and Archie. I can't remember what team they're on, but I do recognize the names. Very. Hmm. I'm trying to remember. But either way, as you can see, we're going to have some interesting game here. We're going to have Malphite up against Siobhan on the top lane. Jarn versus Kazuka in the jungle. Yasuo versus Oriana in the mid lane. And we'll have a Kogma and an Alistair up against this Lucian and Brown. <laughs> okay, so as I almost choke. Make sure to let me know your predictions via Twitch chat, via Twitter, at Jay Kaplan. I always like to hear what you guys have to say. I, I, I would do... Uh, wow, if I can speak. I will say this, though. No one actually tweeted me last game. A little bit disappointed, a little bit sad. At least about the game. There, there were tweets about things, but not... Not pertaining to the game. Peter Porker is such a waste. Peter's support. I don't get it. Either way, Kazakh can be starting off at his red buff here. And Jarvan will be starting off at his blue. So we'll be heading in the same direction. I'm just working our way around here. And I'm curious to see how this bomb is going to go, actually, now that I think about it, because. Kogma! Ah! Oh, he doesn't have an escape. Alright, so either way, we'll see how this one goes. I mean, Alistair obviously does offer sustain. Uh, does offer a lot of CC as well. Does offer a lot of protection on top of that. If you use correctly, but... I'm gonna find how this one's gonna go. Again, I feel like Lucian should have the edge. I mean, just... In fact, he should have the edge no matter what, just because it's a Kogma up against a Lucian. And of course, mid lane's really interested to see how the hell that you know Yasuo does against Oriana, where Yasuo probably should be able to beat an Oriana one on one. Either way, we'll find out. I'll see the early stage of the game a little bit. If Lil Tatal is going to win one. Oh, oh, still going in a little bit right there. Does some good damage to a Day Rune. And you see Narcha taking quite a bit as well in here, so. Not a bad little bit of a combo. It doesn't make it so they don't actually, act, uh, actually lose any minions to that turret as well. 14 12 in the top lane in terms of CS. As you see, Shivana up against Malfa right there. Do have Kazakh trying to come in for a gank at the bottom lane here. Day Rune getting a little bit too deep though, and they try to go in, they try to commit for it. Day Rune can actually potentially be burst on the flash, comes in first blood for Alistair. And you see, of course, Neon able to back away from this one, but now he's the back of his teammate. He needs to back up Blood Grip. He needs to make it so he can't escape. And they actually might be able to pick up a kill. Archie getting solo on life, and he will be taken down. Neon picks up the kill, and they have netted themselves too. They might around this third kill, and look at that Sar trying to get on Licker, but he can't get the damage, and Licker picks it up. They turn around the 2v3, pick up three kills, two to Alistair, one to Neon, and they take home a strong lead now. 6.7 thousand to 5.1. Was not expecting that to happen at the tail end of it, but nonetheless, come out huge, and that just giving them full control of this bottom lane. Alright, so... That's not the start you want to have when you should be strong with them early on in the game. And we're going to find out how much of that's really going to hurt them here once we do have Kogma actually go back. So that 300 gold picks up a phage. And, well, I would hate to be M5 in that bottom right now. So I wonder. Will Sar come back around again to maybe make a gank happen? Maybe pick up those buffs that he just lost? I'll really just leave that lane alone now and try to help out these other ones where... You know, top lane, a lead here for the side of Virtus Pro. Mid lane, a slight lead for Virtus Pro as well. And bottom lane, yeah, it does have a CS lead in favor of M5, but again, those kills can make things a little bit different here, and let's see what happens. Obviously, double buffs on Liquid. And he can afford to just gauge all he wants. I mean, look how tanky he is. He has a healing as well. Like, how do you really deal with this as a Braum? Like, you can't really even get into a... 
into lane to last hit some minions, so use your Relic Shield here. And the CM5 playing very, very passive, very safe. As I say, that Dayrun, of course, does go in because, you know, why not? But here we go, Engage coming yet again. That's into a huge minion wave, though. This is actually not a smart Engage, not to mention Archie would have blocked out quite a bit of damage right there, and we'll get stunned up. But again, he's Alistair, not going to care too much. And he should be okay, but still things getting very, uh, very explosive here in this bottom lane. Alright, so, Sar just sticking to his jungle. Obviously, uh, Default to Evil has been able to just continue to farm up here, considering he hasn't really been needed, but now he's going in on middle. He's looking for Rihanna. And don't worry, we'll force the flash. Up coming on an Archie right there, Day Ruin again, trying to continue for the fight here. It does knock away so you get some free damage on a Day Ruin. Unfortunately, not able to commit really too much in there, but again, that blue buff just gives them so much sustain. And, well, another kill. A little bit difficult to really deal with that. And, uh, well, Dayrun now at 0 and 2 here. Yeah, he'll be able to buy up when he goes back to base. But, yeah, is that going to help you survive in the lane? Not really when your opponent has a 1,000 gold lead on you almost at 7 minutes in. And that does now make it 2 and 0 and 2. Peter Parker going to get... What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? We'll have Jarvan come from the side, though, so we'll be okay, but... Kazix now looking for the jump over, and Peter, you better be careful, son. And Kazix misses out on the W. And Peter won't at least flash away from this one. Shivana now trying to come in here. And we'll pop the ultimate. Peter Pork, you gotta pull out some sweet moves if you wanna skip this one, sir. We'll pop the wind well, but we'll jump right back into the dragon's mouth for his death here. But look at it coming around. The bull is looking for a fight here as well as Malphite. The ultimate can be used catching out too. Sar, I'm, you're not gonna live, son. You're gonna be knocked taken down here by default. And that great ultimate coming out of uh, power right there. It does open up two more kills, so they lose one, they pick up two. Good trade nonetheless here. Not to mention you get control of the enemy jungle off of this. All right, so six to one, eight minutes in. Looking at a, it's uh, almost 3K gold lead here. Only eight minutes in. But Bill Droid Cutlass has been picked up for uh, PvP, so he's going to have that, working towards that Blade of the Rune King. Going to help out in lane. And you can see, Neon actually hasn't been able to pick up anything. Got Boots, got a Ruby Crystal, or Sapphire Crystal. So he's actually not picking up his Sheen just yet. Or any other uh, offensive items. Got to be a little bit careful. He's got to wait for his Alistair to come back in to help out. Hmm. Where are those pings coming down from? It looks like they want to force a fight here, potentially, on this bottom side. And Sar is in the vicinity, over at that white camp. And Neon getting very aggressive. He's actually going to be jumped on, directed camera, please. And he's going to get actually very low for this one. He has flash, he has heal. He should be fine here. A nice little turnaround comes in out of Alistair. Helps soak up a little bit more damage in there. And he should be okay. We'll have some healing from Alistair in just a few. But you can see now, Sar sneaking around. Let's get revenge from earlier. This is going to be tough, though. Why? Direct to camera, why? It's going to be very tough. I'm going to stop you, direct to camera, and I'm just going to sit on Kog'Maw right now, because I want to see what's going to happen in this bottom lane. You see Kha'Zix? Well, he was there. He was looking for the fight. But of course, for him, he wasn't allowed to here. And now, oh, Brown trying to turn this around. Alistair going for the engage here. Kha'Zix, is he to come in? Right now, he's going to have to. As you can see, they're able to push into this one. Sorry, coming in with the stealth. We'll have the ultimate pop-down Alistair here, looking to turn on the fight, and he's not scared. This bull does not care here, and he will have potentially Naka coming in just a few seconds. But you can see, force it back on the left. Day ruined, very low on life here. You see Brown trying to come in, trying to help him out, trying to get a little bit of extra armor and magic resist, and now they're going back in onto uh, Lucian. The exhaust comes in onto, uh, onto Kha'Zix there, and Neon actually might go down from this one, tries to come in with the flash out of liquid, but he doesn't have anything else to help him out with, and well, Kama can use his, ult or his passive just to farm up here, but here comes Jarvan, here comes the J-Man. And well, here's a teleport out of uh, PvP here to potentially just around. Archie gonna get taken down here, stuck inside the Cataclysm. And Power comes in as well, picks up two, gets rid of the Cataclysm here. He will have ultimate up in just a few seconds, tries to get the knockback on Shvada. Oh, knocks up on her turn here. And now PvP gonna be taken down as well here. A double kill now for Power. And again, his, his presence around the map, it's been pretty damn spot on here. I mean, we'll even have in the meantime Flash pick up a 1v1 up against Yasuo. But still, really weird trade here between both these teams. and. Well, the Sheen has now been done for Neon, or picked up here for Neon, so we'll have that finally. 
And it looks like Dayruin, well, does have a CS lead, does have 1,100 gold to spend. Can work towards that Builder Water Cutlass if he wants to pick that up as his first buy. And he does, in fact, secure that. Okay, so it goes for that one. Relatively low CS game here between both these teams, considering how much action's been going down. And we even have Oriana picking up a sweeping lens here, so... Whew. <laughs> this is an M5. <laughs> it would be funny to actually see that M5 come back. But I don't think it can. Okay. Well, now the J-Man again, looking towards bottom. Is he on top of a ward? No, he's not. He's got a pink ward there. It looks like they will go for the engage here. Looking for Dayrune. And, well... Cataclysm's not up just yet. It will be in just a few seconds, but they might not even need it here. And right now, Archie needs to get away from this one. As Cataclysm will come in, but just to secure the kill. I imagine they're not going to go for the dive here, but nonetheless, they have a 2 1 and 4 Kogma, 2 a 0 and 7 Alistair, and a 3 0 and 3 Jarvan. Their tanks are getting tanky. Their damage is getting damage. <laughs> to say damagey. And now they're looking for a dragon here, and look at this. They're turning on the star. Archie going in a little bit too deep here. And he will at least be able to back away a little bit. But again, have to be very careful. Dragon should be locked down. And it will be picked up here for the blue side. Warriors Pro will get that. And you can see Miss M5 trying to get back down towards his bottom side here. But Sar, you know, 131, 40 CS. He's, you know, behind in CS. He's behind in kills. He's behind. Well, he's ahead in deaths, I guess. I mean, that's one thing he's leading in compared to his opponent. But that's not necessarily the, the stuff that he would be leading in here. You can see the damage starting to really kick in for Kogma, really starting to ramp up. In the meantime, mid lane is being shoved in on here, and we'll go ahead and take a look at that real quickly. You can see Oriana trying to launch it, popping the ultimate. Won't really do much damage, though. But we'll at least force them back and clear out, or at least help clear out that mini wave here. But look at that, Dayruin trying to come in, but look at the damage they're turning on top of the exhaust comes in as well. And Dayruin, he might be able to pick up the kill on a Neon here in just a few seconds, dashes into him. But I imagine he's not going to be able to escape this one here. He will be blown up by the Kogma passive. So it will be a one for one in the end of things there. Not necessarily the best of trades, but you know what? I think both teams will just take that as the Triforce has now been finished up here. And you can see that by the Ring King, well, it won't be done here on this round for Dayruin. That means he's going to be an item behind. It's really going to hurt quite a bit. She almost go for face the mountain. All right, so Power is continuing to try to shove this middle lane. He's keeping Sar there. He's forced now PvP to come down from that top side to help out. And as you can see, Power just doesn't really care too much about this. And he's able to shove them back. So Eddie Carey is not going to be all on the bomb side. Support's joining the uh, little bit of a mix coming in the middle. Uh, wow, Malphite going straight in with the astral combo. Look at the damage they are doing. Power picks up a kill. Shivana will turn around and pick up one, but Flashlight gets taken down. Default to Evil now trying to maybe get back in, maybe run away. They have Alistair now there. They don't have a lot of damage to support this, but they have the tank as they need to just full out survive. And Shivana, you better not be going in some. What are you doing right now? You have Flash, yes, but you better be careful. He's getting so low on HP. We'll force the Flash out of him. Now Brown gonna be in trouble. Look at this day ruin. Potentially getting dove. Colin comes out on a neon. Don't have the damage to finish him off, but has enough damage to at least force him back. And that will be a two for one exchange, or a one for two, one for zero exchange. Jason, please. In favor of Virtus Pro. Look at this Brown trying to come around bottom. The bull is just chasing down after him with those boots of ability. He's looking for the engage here, but he doesn't go for it instead. Just gonna back off, trying to heal up Neon, trying to force them back now because obviously they have the healing advantage, not to mention the CC advantage. And well, it'll be successful in that one. So 13 to 5, now 15 minutes in. About a 6k goal lead almost. Notice you, Senpai. I notice all. It's a lot of uh, real Russian being said in chat now. Okay, so. Let's look at the, the zoning power that an Alistair brings to a team. It's just ridiculous. And well, Malphite is finally going head-to-head. -head. Has that Blade of the Ring King finally done. Going to actually pop it onto him. Doesn't have uh, ultimate, but it has Flash get away from this one. Said we'll just be able to back away. But finally, Shivana getting some 
Getting some ground here in the top lane. Oh, look at that. Archie going in ham. Hey, uh, Kha'Zix getting knocked up while he's stealthed and knocked away completely here. Because you know what? They're going to turn on Daegu when they pick up one. They're looking for two. Archie going to get taken out with a flash out of Neon. And you know what, Sorry, You're not going to escape this one, son. You're going to get taken down. You're not going to run away. He has flash. He's looking for it. But no! The flash pulverize comes in! It's Tassel from getting over the wall and a triple's picked up by Neon. At a 16 minute mark, and if he wasn't strong enough, now he's got another 18, 1900 gold to spend. They're gonna have a turret to take down, and this is just going all wrong here for the side of M5. Zero and five for Day Ruin, one and five for Zar. You think they learn after Genki Bomb the first time, and now Oriana burst it down. You just got dunked. And now Power going head to head against PvP in the top, and he has no ultimate up. They're so low on life. It looks like they will back away, but the military goes down as well. And how much gold? 2300 to spend after that little bit of a trade. You know what? Virtus Pro are looking so strong to take this game. Almost a 10k gold lead. Just approaching that point. And can they be stopped now? I really don't know. Oh, Peter. Teleport coming in. Flashes away. And he will escape. And even Fault Evil just being a little bit of a, of a dick. Spam laughing. Round coming in. And you know what? This is what you get. Force the flash. You're gonna get knocked up. This is why you don't sit there and spam laugh. And either way, they're still continuing the fight here. You see power coming in. No ultimate up though. And well, Peter Porker, you're gonna get taken down here. But here comes Neon off to the side. Looking for a kill. We'll pick up PvP because you know what? He's 7 2 and 4. And they're looking for more. And uh, look great. Gonna get the knock up on Archie. And Archie gonna flash. But can he escape the exhaust? And well, he will go down. Power is unstoppable at 5 0 and 3. And the cow does not care. Sar, you are gonna get dropped. Neon is dominating at 8, 2, and 4. And I guess it was a 2 for 3 trade, yes. But still, this is why you don't BM even with a 10k gold lead. Because you're gonna die. And I'm gonna make fun of you for it. Just don't understand why people try to be BM like that. <laughs> I mean, haha, it's funny, whatever. But then you die and you look like an idiot. And Lucian. You know, 0 and 5 wasn't enough. We're looking at potentially 0 and 6. Oh, Blade King can be used though. And that should be able to give him a uh, little bit of an escape. Alright, so. Yeah, he got that. He got away. So you had to use pretty much everything and anything to escape. It's not a good sign here. And Alphite's only getting tankier. Pogba's only getting more damage. And. Shimano going head to head against him off right here. Look how fast that rock is. Holy crap. And he will just run away. So we'll just bait that one out. Dragon is up. Kha'Zix is nowhere near this one right now. And this will be a free dragon for the side of Virtus Pro. And I won't be a kill to back that up with, but nonetheless, 20 to 7. And that 10k gold leads at 9 right now. It is so damn close to happening. And you can see that in the CS, like, there's no really big lead anywhere. It's just all this fighting that's been happening. Mm, the rock. Trying to get some distance. PvP might be trouble. The knockups again. PvP, you are dead. Default picks it up. Archie dropped as well here. Nickert picks up that one at 3 0 and 15. And Dayru, oh my god. Almost getting completely bursted down. You know what? This is a free turret for them. And look at this. Sar getting caught out a little bit. Power trying to come in. He will just back off though since the stealth obviously will help Sar escape here. But again, that's another turret. 3 to 2. 10k gold lead. It's now 11. And you know what? They're not done just yet. Looking for the inhibitor turret. The ultimate comes out of Orianna. Doesn't really connect really with uh, the people it needs to. Because you have so many tanky people protecting this Cogbond. And you know what? That's an inhibitor turret gone. The tension inhibitor as well. Inverse Pro, I'm going to find it hard for you to lose this one. It is always possible. But if you do lose this one, I will make fun of you forever. And oh, here we go. Braum going for the engage here. Trying to get a little backup. Oh, Alistair with the knockups again. Yasuo ultimates. Look at the damage. It is ridiculous. And Peter Porker picks up a kill on Asar. They haven't lost a single man yet. There's a lot of blinking red lights here. It doesn't matter. Triple kill comes in. Surrender can't even be put up just yet as we finally hit that 20 minute mark. And I wouldn't be surprised to actually see it be used here for the side of M5. 26 to 7, 20 minutes in, 41,000 gold to 27.4. You're not going to come back from this. No, look at that gold they had to spend. You're not going to come back. Abyssal, Blade of the Rune King, Frozen Heart, all just completed. Like, Infinity Edge is almost done too.
<laughs> for Yasuo, for Peter Pork. There it is. Okay, so uh, how do you com how do you compete against this? So you have a top laner with two full completed items for uh, the side of VP compared to one on the other side. You have an AD carry with two full items com compared to the one. You have a mid laner with uh, two completed items against one. You're... You're getting knocked up a lot. There's a lot of uh, phrases I could have used there. Most of them would have got me in trouble, though. And look at that again. You can't really do much to this. You know what, they're just going to shove. Because it doesn't matter. It just does not matter here. As you see, that turret's going to drop here very, very quickly. Oh, flash. Cobra is not really going to work out too well for Liquorith, but... You know what, they're going to continue to dive in. They're blowing Hibbert down. They're shipping his pushing Archie, getting blown up completely. Or an ultimate does absolutely jack squat. And Neon now looking for that kill onto uh, that Kha'Zix, but... I think he'll connect just yet here, but it doesn't matter. They have the healing out of Alistair. They have the turret very low, and they're going to pick that one up here in just a few seconds. They can even go for a re-engage if they want to, I believe. Cataclysm is still up on Jarvan, and there goes the turret. And right now you can see not a lot of HP to spend on the lives, and the Cone going to come in looking for a connection on a Licker, and he will survive just barely by power, and the Q will not work, neither will the W. And look at this. Finally, the shutdown comes in. They finally kill someone after the last, I, I feel like, 15 minutes. Look at that, they're looking to turn it yet again here. Neon, gotta be careful here, they're gonna be used. Cataclysm comes in as well, locks them down, and they pick up two more kills just like that, and the third. And look at that, triple kill coming in just as quick for Peter Porker. And they will finally back away now at 22 minutes in. I... How do you come back from this? I don't really think there is a way to. Even a haunting guy's picked up for power, because you know what? <laughs> Why not build damage when you're this far ahead? Alright, let's get another blue left to Cogmother. Baron. I don't actually agree with this. I do not actually agree with this. This could be stolen away. Yeah, I was just going to cover the wall to buy a little bit of time here, but they have to be very, very careful. This Neon trying to harass over the wall. Here comes Shimano off the side. They have stopped the damage on the Baron. The ultimate coming out. Oh, look at that! Why are you fighting here? What the hell? They finally do pick up the kills because they have such a huge gold lead, but that could have gone so much worse. Neon did get taken down. And right now, yeah, so we're looking for potentially a triple yet again. But he will unfortunately not be able to. It's a one for three trade. And there's the Cataclysm. But obviously both just dashing away, so... He will be able to survive this one. But again, why? Like the Baron, there's no point in going for it. And right now, Day Ruin. Oh, Peter Pork in very low. Gonna get the knockup. We'll be shut down here. And, well... The Lance will come down to see the fate of Day Ruin. And inhibitors should drop, I would imagine. They don't have much damage right now. They have tankiness, yes, but... You know, Oriana could clean up after about five minutes of attacking them if she wanted to. But here comes Siobhan off to the side, and this might be a potential throw coming in. Look at the damage! It's not really there right now, but there, it doesn't matter. Obviously, the side of Murder's Pro don't have much for themselves in power. He will eventually fall from this one. And might even Jarvan here up towards that northwest side. And he will eventually fall. I don't imagine. And you know what? They're left with one man with Baron after that. Not a smart trade. Don't get why teams do that. <laughs> Alright, at least look at Dragon now. 12 and 3 for Kogma, 10 and 5 for Yasuo. 
And Lock on Star is done. The injury's done as well here for power. Midday Rune now picking up his uh well, it's Whisper. He still doesn't have that much damage. Like the only way that VP can still lose is if they make stupid plays. Like they must have well they would have had 20k goal lead if they didn't just kind of all die there at the end. And they do still have a beastly late game team with that Kogma and the protection that he has. But again, Oriana, you know, getting getting going. Deathcap, Athenes, Seekers, Arm Guard. It's getting there. A little bit of Void Staff action in there. Maybe maybe the Zonias. And she'll have damage to Shred Neon and potentially Peter Porker. But here we go. They're going straight for Oriana. And you know what? You're not escaping that one. She'll get taken down here. And I think the side of VP have had it. They don't want to lose out in the game anymore. And look at that. You are just constantly in the air. You are not touching the ground, son. Dayrun will get dropped in just a second. It looks like Peter Porker might go down for this one. Now look at it. Just spam laughing. Tanking up the turret. That's an ace. That is the inhibitor going down, and even GG's being called out here, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that surrender boat. No reason to obviously drag it on anymore. One next turret left to go. Alright, so that will be Virtus Pro advancing through to play against Isuba in the winner's bracket. And of course, that will be M5 dropping down to play against Refuse in the lower bracket. Well played. I, I think it lasted a lot longer than it needed to. But still, nonetheless, they come out with a victory, honestly, and uh, advancing on. You had a 13-5 and 10 for Peter Porker, 13-3-17 for Neon, and 3-1 and 31 for uh, Licorice. So, great game, nonetheless. Congratulations to them advancing on into the winner's bracket. Now they are one game away from getting into the playoffs. Meantime, we're going to a quick little break here, but when we come back, it should be Team Refuse up against M5, determine which team is being knocked out and which team will be into now the loser bracket finals. All right, so you guys, we're going to quick little break here. We'll be back in just a few.